All right, what's good guys? Well, today I want to pull the steering wheel out of my 2004 Trailblazer. Now, in order to do that, I've got to pull the airbag off of this thing. This thing can kill you. So I'm going to show you guys two ways that you can disable this thing before working on it. So our absolute safest way to disable this airbag is to just remove the negative battery terminal. It's kind of a no-brainer, right? Oh, why'd you make a video about that if it's just disconnecting the negative battery cable? Well, I don't give two fucks about Minty Green here. No, I'm just kidding, Minty Green. I'm not really concerned if I do suffer some kind of a side effect from disconnecting the battery right here. Disconnecting your battery, that's your safest bet. We're not even going to argue that. So the second way to disable the airbag in this truck, come here to the underhood fuse block. You're looking for the fuse that says, sir. In this case, sir is at the very bottom here. It's a 10 amp fuse, number 18. And according to my calculations, it should be this fuse right here. We have removed sir fuse from the front fuse block. Now, no matter which way you choose to do this, end result's gonna be the same. Now we wait. So how long are we gonna wait and what are we waiting for? Well, my rule of thumb, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes. Now back when I used to smoke, that was the perfect opportunity to smoke a cig, you know what I mean? Give this shit a couple minutes, do its thing, and then we can get working on it. The reason for this is the airbag controller or airbag computer or sensing and diagnostic module, it goes by a lot of different names, but who the fuck cares? The airbag module in this truck, it actually stores a reserve amount of power. And the reasoning for this is, well, let's just give a worst case scenario here. I'm riding down the road, minding my own business, Whatever happens, happens. I crash the truck, the front end's all fucked up, the airbags don't go off, power from the battery is cut to the truck, okay? So I've got no power to the truck now. But then, the guy that didn't see me crash and doesn't see me fucked up on the road, he crashes into me. Well, that reserve juice is there to deploy the airbags in the event that power was cut and somebody else hits me. So it's kind of like a fail safe. That's why this thing stores an additional amount of juice in it for that scenario. When we cut power to the module by disconnecting the battery or pulling the surfuse, there's still power in that module. I'm sorry I don't have a technical term for what happens to that reserve amount of juice that the module stores. It disperses. The service information says, wait a minute. From day one, I've been in the habit of waiting 10 minutes. You know what I mean? This seems to be an awful lot of work. All I want to do is just press the fucking button on the steering wheel and turn the radio up. So now that we've done whatever we needed to do, we can go ahead and re-enable the airbag system. We can take fuse number 18, our SIR fuse. We can pop him back in here. If we chose to go the battery route, we can go ahead and hook our battery terminal back up. And with our sur fuse back in or our battery hook back up, I always come in from the passenger side before I turn the key on. I don't have my airbag light blinking anymore. Now why do I do that from the passenger side of the car? If something was fucked up during the process where I had the airbag out or whatever, I don't want that shit blowing up in my face, you know what I mean? Just a habit I've gotten into and that's the way I do it and that's what I'm sharing with you guys. So there's some things I'm going to be doing with Minty Green here that's going to have the airbag out or whatever. So instead of repeating this whole fucking thing over and over and over again, it's all in one place, disabling and enabling the airbags in the Trailblazer. Well, today I'm driving this 2012 Equinox or Equinox. It's hot as fuck out here. I got this motherfucker cranked up. 95 degrees, holy shit. So I'm just going out on a little road test. Actually, I gotta turn this up. This is way too hot to be driving without air conditioning on. And it's also pretty hot to be working outside. 
whether it's in a regular repair shop that doesn't have the the uh, what's the word I'm looking for it doesn't have air conditioning I was trying to think of something like it doesn't have the means to sustain a climate controlled environment now since most mechanics are too lazy to close the fucking doors in the winter time when the heat's on you damn sure know they're not going to close the doors in the summertime if an air conditioner was on so I don't blame shops for not wanting to install air conditioners you know in the shop I don't blame them I wouldn't do it either. Real people that should be complaining about the heat are like the roofers. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't imagine being on a fucking roof today. Yes, it's hot today. I understand that. I'm outside. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. You don't need to complain about it. Thanks for reminding me that it's hot. Why don't you tell me that we also uh, evolved from other animals while you're at it? Or that the sun's 93 million miles away? Or any other obvious fucking fact there is on this planet. It's hot out here. Maybe you reach thermal operating temperature and die. Maybe I'm getting old. Well, I know I'm getting old. But maybe I'm getting old and getting complaining. So my complaints is about the complainers. It's like this fucking vast matrix of complaints and who's complaining and what they're complaining about and my complaining about the complaining and what they're complaining about. Just this whole web of complaining. You know what? It's hot. Who gives a fuck? Take your broke ass to the store and buy a fan and an extension cord and carry that motherfucker around to wherever you're working. So like on this Equinox, Equinox, whatever. Put front brakes on the car. Carry the fan over to the front brakes. Doing rear brakes on the car. Bring the fan over to the rear brakes. Our brake lathe is so fucked up. These rotors are worse now than they were before I did the job. While we're on this topic about the hot weather at the end of August, beginning of September, it's actually the end of August. Don't know when you guys will see this, but while we're on the topic of hot weather, why do mechanics wear pants? I'm wearing fucking shorts, you know what I mean? I got dirt on my leg. Oh no, well at least I'm not sweating my balls off wearing pants in the middle of fucking summer like a goddamn retard. See the motherfucker with the button up shirt, the pants on, sweat running off of them. Don't wear the heavy, thick button down shirt and the pants. T-shirt and shorts, dude. If it was up to me, I'd be wearing flip-flops out of this motherfucker doing what I do. Which I have done before at home, believe it or not. I actually did a head job wearing flip-flops in the middle of summer. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just got tired of hearing people complain about the heat. I don't care. Shut up. Anyway, I hope by the time you watch this that you're not baking your balls off. And if you are, buy a fan. Wear some shorts. Most importantly, stop complaining about it. Hey, baby. There was a hot girl broke down on the side of the road. We ain't stopping for them. We ain't stopping for nobody.